So before we start this video, I just wanted to mention that I don't favor any particular nursery, especially here in the valley, in the Phoenix area. I just want to answer a one real quick question on why we choose certain varieties that we grow here on our property and where we get them plays a big factor. If you've been watching our channel for some time, you know that we have a lot of varieties growing right here in our property, just outside of the Phoenix area in growing zone 9B. And we choose varieties, especially that are heat tolerant, especially low variety chill hours. And if you, like I said, if you've been watching our channel for any some time, you know what the chill hours are. If not, I'll leave a playlist down in the video description below, kind of explaining to you what chill hours are and what they are all about, and especially the dormancy period that we don't get much here in the deserts and other growing areas around the world. I stopped by Home Depot just the other day just to see the variety and there is a ton of variety. Now it's just one nursery here in the valley. There's dozens and dozens of Home Depots and Lowe's and things like that, but I personally suggest checking out your local growers. They are specifically growing plants and trees that are designed for our Arizona soil. One particular is one of my good friends, Reed at RSI Growers. He's been growing trees for decades, longer than I've been alive, honestly. And he grows trees specifically here, especially the rootstocks, for Arizona soil, especially our desert climate. Those rootstocks are designed to handle droughts, really. And that's what we get here in the desert southwest are many months of droughts and high winds and hot temperatures, things like that. So like I said, I'm not sponsored, but that's my honest opinion above all. But I also like selection and variety and a good challenge to grow fruit trees. And if you've checked out some of our mulching videos, you know why we use mulch, because some of those trees, like the trees that have citation rootstocks, those are not very well adapted to our climate and they are not drought tolerant. And that's why one reason why we mulch everything that we have, especially of our fruit trees that we don't get locally here is they got to have mulch. They got to have a good frequent watering schedule so that they can get well established. And that establishment can take three or four years in the ground before they're, they've got a nice hardy root system. And that's definitely one of the most common mistakes is not mulching your trees. I mean, give it a foot of mulch, no kidding. And you'll see in this video where you get the mulch and you can even get chip drops, this is just one option. There's dozens of options around the valley. So don't just stick to this video. Check out the rest of our playlist. We have all kinds of growing techniques growing right here successfully in our backyard in Arizona heat. So let's check out the variety in this particular store. And what I would be choosing if I was gonna be picking a tree at your local hardware store, tools and supplies that are needed. So let's get to it. All right, so we are at the big box store this morning. It looks like they've got a fresh supply of trees. These Dave Wilson trees, Dave Wilson nursery trees. And it's really good because they've got these tags. And this is exactly what I look for when we're getting these trees, are these tags, because they're gonna tell you what these trees do. Hey, friends and family, and if you're just joining the channel, welcome, this is A.A. Ron with AMZ Backyard Orchard and Vineyard, and I am just stopping by because I just looked over the side of the road and I saw all these trees sitting out here and I saw some of these flowers. They are all starting to wake up, even though it's February. Spring is right around the corner and these trees are already starting to feel it. We've had 80 degrees, in fact, yesterday was 82, almost record heat. So these trees are definitely feeling it. Our last frost date is going to be the end of February here in the desert. So we got to protect these trees if we're going to be buying them and make sure we're watching the weather and we're not going to get any freezes so we can preserve these beautiful fruit buds. Hopefully they're going to get pollinated. So if I was going to get a tree, which I am so tempted right now, but we've got so much stuff going on already this year. If you're not already subscribed, make sure you're, make sure you're following us. We are growing here in the desert. Of Arizona 9b we're a hot climate and we're a cold climate cool climate I should say we got freezing in fact we got a hard freeze this year 2024 so if I was gonna be buying one of these trees oh man I'm so tempted these are beautiful trees they're all Dave Wilson nursery one of my favorite growers because they do so well and they give you all this information on the trees that you're gonna be buying so if I'm going to be buying a tree, I'm probably going to get an apple, 
a peach, maybe a nectarine tree. And most of these varieties, in fact, they're getting better as the years go by. They're getting better at the big box stores like we are right now of getting desert adapted fruit trees, the ones that need the low chill hours. So this is what I'm going to be looking for on these tags. Right? Where are we at? Where are we at? Right here. Right here. This is the tag that I'm going to be looking at. This is a Fuji apple. They need less than 500 chill hours. Some of these do actually really well in Southern California where they get maybe like 50 chill hours but this is what I'm looking for right there heat tolerant and the chill hours we get about 300 chill hours if you don't know your zone just google it I know we are in 9b where we can get down into the 20s that is the coldest that we normally get on a cold winter is in the 20s so we're good we get about 300 chill hours in our zone Here's Beauty Plum. She only needs 250 hours. 250 hours right there. They can be cross-pollinated. Here's a Nectarine. What's this one? The Snow Queen. Of course, the Snow Queen. Same thing as the uh, Desert Gold Peach. 250 to 300 chill hours. So it's right on the money. That's what we get pretty much every single winter. Is that 200... 250 to 300 chill hours this year. I think we're gonna get it. I think we've at least got 300 hours Especially in our backyard with our microclimate. We've got at least 300 hours so far So a lot of our trees on our property Are gonna be waking up. So what do you do when you get this thing in the ground or get it home rather you're gonna get it in the ground You're gonna first you're gonna find a spot on your property where you're gonna want one of these things. They do great in full Sun You want to just get the hole nice and big at least two times round that diameter so you're gonna be digging a lot get yourself get yourself a nice shovel and put that bad boy in the ground pack it in with 50 50 mix of amendments amendments can really be any kind of organic material something with mycorrhizal in it let's go see the dirt real quick choices 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 I know it can be overwhelming but let's just make it simple really any of these any of these would be fine any of these would be fine it's all organic material organic meaning it was a plant at one time and now it's been broken down slightly decomposed turned into basically all these things are is just wood chips decomposing barks and branches and just wood chips that have been ground down to a finer material is all it is they're all to me basically the same they all do different things but they all are organic material in fact here's one you can ask the cashier because it's damaged you can ask the cashier to mark it down usually they'll mark it down at least half price what's this one 257 so that'd be a dollar 22 23 23 and a half dollar 23 and a half for that little bag you can find all these damaged goods, scratch and dent items, half off. If you ask your cashier, sweet talk them. But basically they all do the same thing. They've all got nitrogen, they've all got potassium, they've all got phosphorus. But this stuff right here, this is my favorite stuff. If I was gonna get dirt right now, it would be this one. This one's a little pricey. What are we at? $32. Let's see if we got a scratch and dent item. Oh, we got a scratch and dent item right there. Look at that, boom. So that would be like 16 bucks 16 bucks and some change if I was gonna do that right now this is the stuff that I would get right here mix for mix it's got mycorrhiza in it and it's a big bag 2.2 cubic feet and we've bought we bought many of these in the past and I guarantee you hundred percent a lot of our success on growing small first-year plants potted plants fruit trees we use this stuff we use this stuff so it's what four cubic feet it expands to yeah that is the stuff and especially when you start adding water to it it just blows up <laughs> into a massive spongy material it's so good it's so good that's the stuff that I would get right there forget about your cocoa cores and 
everything else. We've tried all that. The peat mosses, yeah, those got a little bit of acidity to it. A little bit. But uh, yeah, that's the stuff that I would get if I was going to get a fruit tree right now and if I was going to mix our native soil 50-50 mix. But really, any of these would be good. You don't want to add too much. No more than 50% native soil and no more than 50% of this stuff when you refill your hole for your fruit tree. And then most of it, the rest of the stuff, when you get a big bag of it, just put it on top of the soil. Use that as a good mulch. And every time you water your tree, the nutrition from this stuff is going to leach down into the hole the more you water it. And that's the whole purpose of mulch is to nourish the soil as you water it every single time. It's going to feed your soil. It's going to feed that mycorrhiza. And that mycorrhiza is going to feed your roots. Symbiotic relationship with that uh, root and fungus relationship. It's good stuff. Let's go check out the shovels. Let's go see. If I was going to plant a tree right now, let's go check out the shovels. Again, choices, choices, choices. So many options. Which one would I get if I was going to get one right now? Which I've got all my toys at home. But if I didn't have these toys, which one would I be getting? Well, I know my soil right now is still hard as a rock because I live in an HOA neighborhood and they have compacted our soil, which keeps our house from falling apart. But I know our soil is nice and hard and compact. So I'm going to be looking for a pick. Back break and work. If you want to hire somebody to dig a hole, go for it. I highly encourage that. Save your back. But uh, just to pop one of these shovels in the ground is going to be tough right now. I know we've had some rain and our soils are softening up a little bit, but you need to go down like two feet, several, several inches. So I'm going to be getting a pick. This is a good one right here. Wow. Look at that bad boy. I would be getting a pick right now. Take that little plastic piece off. I would be getting a pick right now. That way I can break through that hard, compacted layer. Once you get that going, I'd get a bigger one versus a smaller one. You're gonna you're gonna save time and energy with a bigger head like this versus a small little dinky thing like that. It's for small projects. You're gonna be burying a tree. Get a big pick. All right, and then back over here. I'm gonna be getting, not this guy, but this guy. He's got the little feet right there. That's the one I'd be getting right there. Let's check out the other options. Ooh, I like this one. It's got bigger feet on it. You see that? You jam your feet into that thing. And it's got a nice cushy handle. That's probably the one I'd get. Scratch that other one. That's the one I would get right there. 30 bucks. Easy investment. One time purchase for the rest of your life if you take care of it. Easy. All day. Alright, so walking around. I'm looking for wood chips right now. Get yourself a wheelbarrow if you want to. That way you can get all your mixture, your, your uh, native soil, and your compost of whatever it is potting soil whatever it is get yourself a nice wheelbarrow that way you don't have to work so hard and then top dress it with you can use this stuff it's got dyes and inks and stuff it's just bark oh here's another half off item right there scoop all that back into the bag take that to your cash register that's half off of four bucks so that's a two dollar bag and top dress it i would use the red stuff that's what i would use it's pretty it's red it's nice you can use the uh, the regular Regular stuff here, cedar, that's gonna last a long time. That's not gonna break down as fast. Keeps the bugs away, like a cedar chest. But uh, I would dress it with a red. Red or black? I like I like black, but black kinda attracts heat, especially here in the desert, the stuff gets hot, but I like the red look. Uh, so that's what I'd be getting. Just put that right on top of all your, your newly planted tree out on the drip line. That's it, top dress it. You got yourself about $100 worth of equipment and tree, and you're done. And then to save your hands, gloves are optional, but I'm always wearing gloves. I've got dozens of pairs of gloves. Just get one that fits. Get one that's gonna last a long time. I haven't made it down there. I was hoping to 
you get what you pay for, especially with gloves. I know all the other big box stores, the Costco's, the Sam's Clubs, the Walmarts, the Lowe's, the Home Depot's, they've all got gloves here. We're at the, the orange big box store right now at the Home Depot. And uh, I don't work for them, but we use a lot of their products. It just works. Go to your local hardware store, the Aces, Tractor Supplies, is, get yourself a nice pair of work gloves. And if you're clumsy like me and things start flinging up in your eyes, especially when you're picking, get yourself some goggles. If you wear glasses, get your glasses on. If you got some sunglasses, wear your sunglasses. You definitely don't want to be having stuff flying up in your eyes. We've got a whole playlist on planting a lot of our trees, just examples of what we do to plant all of our 60 different varieties of fruit trees, grapevines, blackberries, everything that's been growing successfully for years on our property. Make sure you're subscribed. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, suggestions, leave them down in the comment section below. We do love hearing from all of our viewers. And make sure you're giving this video a nice like. We do appreciate that. So from my family to yours, thanks for watching and good luck.